Welcome to a lesson on solving trigonometric equations involving inverse trigonometric functions. For the first example, we want to solve the given equation over the interval from zero to two pi, closed on zero, and open on two pi. To begin solving the equation, we need to isolate the sine function, and therefore the first step is to subtract one on both sides of the equation. Simplifying, we have two equals 20 times sine of the quantity x minus three, and one minus one is zero. The next step is to divide both sides by 20. Simplifying, two twentieths is equal to one tenth. We have one tenth is equal to sine of the quantity x minus three. In order to solve the equation for x, we need to undo the sine function by taking the arc sine or inverse sine of both sides of the equation. So we'll take the inverse sine of both sides. On the left we have inverse sine of one tenth equals, on the right, inverse sine and sine undo each other. The right side simplifies to x minus three. Remember, inverse sine of one tenth is equal to some angle theta that has a sine function value of one-tenth. And now in order to solve the equation for x, we need to add three to both sides, which gives us x is equal to three plus inverse sine of one-tenth. And let's also get a decimal approximation for this solution. We first need to make sure we are in radian mode by pressing the mode key. And notice in the third row, radian is highlighted, so we are in radian mode. So we can go back to the home screen and enter three plus second sine for inverse sine, one divided by 10, close parenthesis and enter, which gives us the four decimal places, approximately 3.1002. But we're not done here. There is going to be a second solution. Let's call this solution x sub one. To find the second solution, we need to find another angle that has a sine function value of positive one-tenth indicated by theta here. Looking at the sum here, notice how inverse sine of one-tenth would be approximately 0 0.1002, or if we need to, we can verify this on the calculator by pressing second sine one-tenth. So notice how this angle theta is in the first quadrant. Let's go ahead and sketch it. Let's just say that angle is here. Well remember, sine is also positive in the second quadrant as well as the first quadrant. So we need to find the angle in the second quadrant that has the same sine function value of one-tenth. Well that angle would have the same reference angle as this angle here, and therefore the terminal side would be approximately here. But again, the reference angle, this angle here, is 0 0.1002, which means the angle we are looking for is this angle here, which would be pi radians, or half a revolution, minus this angle here, which would be pi minus, again, this angle here of 0 0.1002 radians is given by inverse sine of one-tenth. So we can say inverse sine of one-tenth, which we know is going to be approximately pi minus 0 0.1002. So to find the second solution, we substitute this angle here for angle theta, which is given by inverse sine of one-tenth, which means the second solution, x sub two, is equal to three plus the angle given by pi minus inverse sine of one-tenth. Clearing the parentheses, we have x sub two is equal to three plus pi minus inverse sine of one-tenth. And let's also get a decimal approximation for this solution. To four decimal places, we have approximately 6.0414. So again, our equation does have two solutions over the given interval. So let's take a look at a second example. 
we want to solve the equation for arctangent x equals pi, the first step is to isolate the arctangent function by dividing both sides by four. Which gives us arctangent of x is equal to pi divided by four. In order to solve for x, we need to undo the arctangent function by taking the tangent of both sides of the equation. Simplifying on the left, the tangent function and arctangent function undo each other. The left side simplifies to x. We have x equals tangent of pi divided by four radians. Now we should recognize pi over four as 45 degrees. So if we look at the triangle on the right, if this is a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, we can label the two legs one and the hypotenuse square root two. And since x is equal to the tangent of pi over four radians, or 45 degrees, and tangent theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side, tangent pi over four is equal to one divided by one, which is equal to one, giving us a solution of x equals one. For the last example, we want to solve inverse cosine of x equals inverse sine of three sevenths. In order to solve for x, we need to undo the inverse cosine function by taking the cosine of both sides of the equation. On the left, cosine and inverse cosine undo each other. The left side simplifies to x. We have x equals cosine of inverse sine of three sevenths. Now remember, inverse sine of three sevenths is equal to some angle theta that has a sine function value of three sevenths. And let's model this on the coordinate plane. Also remember, the output of the inverse sine function is in either the first or fourth quadrants and since we have a positive sine function value, we know the reference triangle would have to be in the first quadrant. So let's call this the reference triangle, where this is angle theta. And since the sine function value is 3 sevenths, we can label the opposite side 3 and the hypotenuse 7. And we're looking for the cosine of this angle theta, which means we'll have to determine this leg here, which is the adjacent side, using the Pythagorean theorem. Let's go ahead and call this length x. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we know that x squared plus three squared must equal seven squared, which gives us x squared plus nine equals 49. Solving for x, we subtract nine on both sides, which gives us x squared is equal to 40. And now to solve for x, we take the square root of both sides of the equation. And algebraically, we do have two solutions here, even though we do know Rx here has to be positive. So we have x equals plus or minus the square root of 40. 40 is equal to four times 10, which gives us x equals plus or minus two square root 10. But again, we know our x has to be positive, so we label this two square root 10. And now we can determine x, which is equal to cosine of this angle theta, where the cosine function is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, and therefore x is equal to two square root 10 divided by seven. I hope you found this helpful.